Not one of us here has an excuse for not believing in a creator because he has shown it in his creation. And everybody that's not here today in the entire world does not have an excuse either. Let's include them too. No excuses. So now, information. Talking about information in the DNA. What is it? Where does it come from? And can it even be defined? Well, let's start here. You know where we really need to start is the definition of a definition. We gotta go all the way down to the basics to understand this thing. What makes a good scientific definition? You know why I do this? Because I read through a lot of textbooks and very few of the definitions are valid definitions. They've made them so fuzzy that our students don't even know what they're learning anymore. So we gotta get back to the basics. If one, it needs to be precise, has to have distinct borders, very, very clear. Include all the attributes that are distinguished from its other entities and exclude everything that lacks at least one of these attributes. That is the definition of a definition in science. And I don't see that in a lot of textbooks. <coughs> Clear and precise. State exactly what is included and what is not included. Let's take an example here. Attributes. There's some fruits. Let's look at some attributes. Number one, it has to be firm, round, edible fruit. Does that leave anything out? Yes, it does. It leaves out bananas and pears. They might be edible, but they're not round, are they? Another attribute. Comes from a small tree. Does that leave anything out? How about the grapes? And then, red, green, or yellow edible skin with white flesh and a central core. That leaves out what? The orange. So when you look at all those attributes, they clearly define one and only one type of fruit, and that's the apple. You leave any one of those attributes out, then we don't have a very clear distinction of an apple, do we? That's what we mean by scientific definitions. Let's be very clear and state exactly the attributes that are included and not included. Let me show you some examples of bad definitions I'm finding in textbooks. Number one, evolution has changed over time. You know, every one of you just evolved because every one of you just moved, breathed, and that's changed over time, isn't it? Is that a very clear definition of anything? No, it is not, but that's what our students are being taught, folks. That is an invalid definition because it includes every single thing in the universe. And here's another bad definition. Evolution, genetic change in a species over time. Well, I thought that was a good one. No, it is not. Because genetic change can be any kind of genetic change, and most genetic changes are what? The wrong way. Is that what evolution is? Because many genetic changes causes a loss of information. So that doesn't describe evolution either. Neither one of those are valid definitions for evolution. That's why our students are so confused. They're being deceived into believing evolution. You see, evolution requires the addition of new functional genetic information. And that is being left out of our textbooks. So what is information then? You know, we read dictionaries. We use it on the internet. We use it in our computers. We have it in our DNA. We have it in the Bible. But there's no universal definition. Isn't that something? There's not a single universal definition of information anywhere until today. I read a lot of these dictionaries. Not one dictionary I've read defines information. They describe it, but they don't define it. That's quite amazing. This is a pretty interesting word. In other words, a whole society thrives on information. Businesses thrive on information, but they can't define what it is. So what we need to do here is establish a definition of information that works in all cases. And we're going to call this a universal definition of information. And we need to see if it works in all biological systems and all technological systems because there is no definition that currently works that way. That's what we're going to do. If it's going to be universal, it's got to work everywhere. So we're still building. Let me show you some of the current definitions of information. How about this one? Information is everything. <laughs> That's what I get from evolutionists. Does that definition exclude anything in the universe? No, it doesn't. It includes everything in the universe. That is not a valid definition. It's not valid. Here's the most popular definition of information used. It's called coded systems with or without meaning. That is the most popular. Let's look at that one. This model includes random assemblies of symbols that have no meaning. Well, let's take a look at that. There's a sentence. Hello, how are you? 
And there's the same number of letters down below, same letters exactly. And we are told by evolutionists the bottom line has more information than the top line. What? Is there a logical disconnect here? Have we just abandoned all logic? Well, let's suppose we do this. Some, let's suppose your computer's on the blink. And that happens once in a while. Your computer's on the blink. And you call up a computer engineer to come fix your computer. And what they do is they take your entire operating system and they scramble all the code and say, here it is. And then they charge you $500. Would you be happy with that? And then they walk away saying, you got more information now than you did before. <laughs> See, that's an example of code systems with no meaning. Or how about they did this? You go to a hospital because you're not feeling well.